Have you ever tried to take a metal pot that's on a stove off with your bare hands? Um, if you have, you, you may have gotten burned. Um, but hopefully, you, that pot had a foam handle on it. Or maybe you used some hot pads, some, some gloves that helped you get it off without burning your hands. Well, these are examples of conduction. So that metal pot on the stove is a really good conductor. And that conduction is basically because those molecules are packed tightly together and their electrons are somewhat loose configuration, it can easily pass that kinetic energy from one atom to another. So that metal pot is going to very quickly pass those, those molecules up to the handle and to your hand, and you're going to get burned. Um, the foam uh, handle or the pads you're using, those are examples of good insulators. Those are things that don't conduct very well. And generally, they're things that have much lower density and more air between them. Air is a very good insulator. The molecules and, and gases are spread out and they don't bounce into each other very well and pass on that heat energy. So when we talk about conduction, we're talking about the ability of a material to transfer energy through direct contact. And in solids, especially solids like silver and copper, those tightly packed molecules with those loose outer electrons can bump very quickly and pass that energy from one to another. They're very good conductors. Gases and objects with lower densities don't bump into each other quite as efficiently and are not good conductors. And they're good insulators. They're things that will prevent heat from being passed quickly from one point to another. So this is all um, basically how we can understand conduction and how conduction works.